different. Perhaps we should have been doing snow scenes well if your Christmas card and mm -hmm. print and send out. But a bit late. A big snow scene um, in spring next at my London in the seal rooms. Uh, so what we're looking at today is a more traditional watercolour. We're going back to the more traditional ways of working. Not so loose today. Um, and I'm going to be using most of the watercolour techniques in this, even though we're doing quite small pieces. So we're doing wet into wet, wet next to wet blending. Um, we're doing graduated washes. We're doing. Oh, we've got a bit of the master fluid on here. The master fluid I use, I've come to this conclusion, is the Pebio one. It's the blue one. You can see what you're doing. You're using a white one, you get lost. And this one does not ball up in there. And the bottles are good. I almost lost an entire set of brushes going to America years ago when a glass bottle uh, lid split into my paints and the brushes. And you can imagine what that was like. When I got there, it was all dried in the brushes and trying to get it out. Um, so as you can see what this one does. The other problem with masking fluid is heat. It doesn't like sunshine. And again, I took a, a, a well-known art firm, you won't mention, um, but a well-known one that many of us use and you're affiliated to, took their um, masking fluid white one to uh, Egypt. And in the sunshine there, painting palm trees, it just turned into gunk. In the sun, it just literally soaks into the paper. You cannot, it comes off like you know, it's sludge. It just doesn't even, even set. And I almost ruined the watercolour because I couldn't get the damn stuff off and I couldn't make it work. So this one doesn't do that. The video I found, you can see it, and it lasts in the, in the, in the tub. Um, and it, it tends to, even with reasonable heat, it tends to come off. We'll see today because the one I've done, that has been done several weeks ago now, so we'll see how it's lasted. So yeah, masking on that. The way of using that, um, if anybody's seen clay shapers, you can buy little clay shapers in sets. They're little rubber tipped ends uh, on a stick. Um, you can get various points and flats, and they're quite useful. Even to sharpen the end of a paintbrush and use the stick end is fine. If you're going yeah. to use a brush, you're best off using the small nylon brushes um, because it washes off those better. Um, it's hard to get it out otherwise if once it sets on your brush, some chemicals will get it out. But I just find a, a sharpened piece of stick even mappers, as I was saying earlier on, pens, you can use all sorts with it. Um, and again, uh, the fine lines here, what I did like originally were the SAA ones with the needle on, because those were done with the SAA bottles with the needle. But they tend to clog up, and as I say, they tend to um, it bores. But it's fresh, it's good stuff. I use more brushes with watercolour than I do with almost any other paint. I've got about two couple, a couple of sets of brushes with um, acrylics and oils. With watercolour, I tend to have this. Well, I've got two in France again. Most of my watercolours are in France, but in, in France, I have two full sets like this with daggers, with swords, with rakes, with combs, um, with hakes, with flats, with rounds, all, all sorts, because I tend to do more brushwork or have the choice of more brushwork. Although, very often, I'm a bit like Ron Ranson, I can get away with just a hake or a large oval knot. My favourite brush of all for me is not so much the hake now, it's the oval knot. And I can use that, maybe a river, and obviously reduce an entire painting with that because, like the filberts, a knot can go thin one way and thick the other expensive. I've just come across um, some stuff in specialist crafts. That is their time six. They do a, 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 a two, a four, and a six. The two is uh, a pouring one, so if you want to do abstract or pouring, that's what that's good. Then the four is like a normal acrylic that we get cheaper acrylic. Um, you put it onto a palette, it spreads out a bit. This one, uh, Specialist crafts. Take a risk. But yeah, really heavy bodied. How much? How much? Without, without a person that knows, how much how much a box is it? That would be at least eight or nine quid from wouldn't it? Four quid from there. So, and all the colours are that price. So, specialist crafts worth looking at their website, thinking about. Today, this little set of watercolours, they, they offer um, teachers or trade. A lot of freebies, people. So have a look, and they will send you um, a couple of tubs of this. They'll send you a box of watercolours. They'll send you all sorts of free to try. So you know, if you want to go as a teacher and whatever, uh, you can get them something. How much watercolour set like that? Two fifty. And it is. I mean, I would always say on my films, you need to use um, artist quality watercolours because. The other ones are not as good, and they won't go as thinly and transparently, they won't go as far, and so you're not really gaining. But today, I've been having a little bit of fun with these, I'm just testing them, 
And I've, I mean, I've, I spent out 120 quid of the day on the acrylics because I've got a whole series coming in to really give them a fair trial. And I, and I, I know I should use those somehow. But these, well, so that's their one, Specialist Crafts, assorted set of 25s there, two quid. Um, then, I say most of my watercolours are in France. I've got a lovely round palette. You can't buy them these days. There's a firm in America doing them, but they're 30, 40 odd quid. About 32 pounds on the Santola. But they're a wonderful palette if you ever want to be invested in. You have a, 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 a great palette who's going to buy you a bunch of Christmas present. Um, but you put your colours all around the outside, then you've got more, then you've got mixing palettes in the middle, and they're really, really nice. And if you look on my Facebook page, you can see the advert there. So you can go directly and look at it, and the palette's on there, and you can see if you want to buy one. Um, so that's what I use, one of those mainly. But from the old days, I just keep a basic set of the Windsor and Newton and so on in there. And they are artist quality. But what I've moved on to most of all, and my favourites, are these Russian paints, the Sonne. And there are others. But Sonne, uh, they're about 15 to 18 pounds on the, uh, if you order them from Russia directly. Um, be careful. Some of the oh, Russian paints. Yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. That's the problem. You know, when you finish and you wet these, and you stick yes. because you've got the colour chart, it goes back on there. Put the lid on and then you can't get the thing off because it's dried on there afterwards. So you've got to think about that, let them dry a bit before you go back. Um, that is a problem, but they are really rich and strong. And I'm going to just use that paper from last week, but it's going to show you. That's the paints from the cheap set just now. They're not bad. Uh, they're looking slightly muddy, slightly opaque, but they're not bad. But we will see the difference in a moment in the others against those. Yeah? Just so, no. so you get an idea. And the strength of these Sonne, Daniel Smith paints, I would advise. But they're expensive, again, but they are really strong and vibrant. It's very difficult in watercolours to get the darks, isn't it? Yeah. One way of getting darker colours and richer colours with a watercolour is to put some gum arabic into your water. If you want to get that extra bit of depth, watercolours are made by very fine pigment held together with gum arabic. So are pastels, but the, the pigment in pastels is thicker, it's coarser. But the watercolours are very, very fine and it's held together by gum arabic. Hence, when you press out of a tube into here, it's exactly the same stuff as is in the pans, but it dries out. So when you start painting, make sure you just touch your watercolour paints first, so that they're wet enough, you're not scrubbing. We don't want to touch the watercolours with the brush, you want to be scrubbing. So gum arabic in your water will give the dark, that little extra bit of depth, give you a few tips for before you carry on, okay? Um, so we've got the very rich paints, we've got the lighter, more uh, delicate English paints, we've got a choice of stronger paints with something like Daniel Smith, the, um, stronger colours over here you can buy from the SAA. The SAA have their own artist quality watercolours, which I think equal Windsor and Newton anyway. Uh, they're, they're perfectly good and they're cheaper again. So you haven't got to say they're too expensive to buy. Um, papers next. Paper is for the choice of, and so many papers differ. We, we know that the watercolour papers differ because not only of the surface texture, but the amount of glue size that's used in them. If any of these ones you want to try out, the daggers, the swords, the, the rakes, there's all sorts in here. By all means, if you want to see what they're like. You know, it's very hard to paint a, a, a round hole with a square brush. It's very hard to paint a square hole with a round brush. So I've got square brushes here for the windows, and I've got brushes for each course. For, 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 and I can just get away with one brush normally. Right, let's have a look at these paints. And on we go, which we not. So we've got the different materials here, different so, costs of them. And that's using this little uh, full pan set, the cheap set. Let's see how we go now against these colours with the Windsor and Newtons. Let's just take a bit of, of the blue of the... About the same, it's not bad actually. So far, is it a bit more transparent? Yeah, you see the difference there is that's granulating more straight away. Granulation, especially when you get a textural paper, it goes in between the grains of the texture of the paper. And ultramarine is a beautiful one for that. To make our darks, ultramarine and burnt sienna, are great for making them on the colour to another find them. That's that one. That's to another. So that would be that would be a variegated wash coming down from one colour to another. Um, it's better when you've got it on a, a flat and you can tilt it to the angle you want to get the finish falling down. Just to give you an idea. Right, we can also take out from that to make our clouds. This won't do it because the paper is so cheap and so that you can you can dab out the colour giving your whites out again. Not only can you do these wonderful big strokes with a head, um, you can texture it too like this. So you can use it like that. You can, get, you can load it up with paint. Oops. And put that there. Try to escape. Um, and you can really blob in your 
So H is a lovely thing to use, and if you've watched Ron Ransom's films or his work, you know how nice they are. Now, we're all always learning, and one of my students here has just said, do you want to get Martin fluid off a brush, strip it in olive oil for how long? Oh, well I tried it, it was only a Google search I did, because yeah. it ruined a brush, and it, I went back about five minutes. It Fantastic, well that's worth remembering, off. I will try it out if it happens again. Okay. Because it's latex, it will respond to oil dissolving. Ah, right, uh, I'm going to start with my... I could do this with a large round brush or I'm going to use my oval mop and I'm using these cheaper paints just for fun today to give it a go on the smaller work. I'm going to make up a wash of the yellow ochre in my case because I haven't got raw sienna. I would prefer to use raw sienna. Give that a test. That's about right. This as I say is the, uh, the practice paper, SAA practice paper. And I'm going to give the entire sky a wash of yes. that. Yep. Right, my white clouds, where I want the whitest bit of cloud, just here, I'm going to take a bit out with my... It's going to dry fairly quickly because the conditions in here are quite dry. With the, and the wetter you make this, of course, the more time, the more charge you've got to take out these, these whites. But you can just see now with watercolour paper, I can start to take out my, my whites a bit more. Now I want a, a graduated wash of coming from the deeper blue down to the lighter blue. So I've mentioned we've got cerulean or turquoise, we've got the ultramarine. I'm going to start with my ultramarine. Start off fairly strong, so I'm going to make a fairly strong mix to drop into here. And I'm going to go around that cloud, which is still fairly, it's, it's actually, um, it's gone dry very quickly in here, but I wanted a nice soft edge here. I'm not going to get it. Um, I'll have to, I'm going to show you how to get a soft edge in just a moment, so don't worry about that. Right. Now you see what I've got there has dried too fast because of the conditions in here. I'm now going to take some clean water and just soften the edges of some of this. So this is wet on dry because it's dried, it shouldn't be. If it was wetter it wouldn't have done this. And I'm now going to make the wet on dry wet into wet by just softening some of the edges here with clean water and just letting it blend in right down through here with the cerulean or the there's so many ways we could do this. This is just one way of working. It should have been wet into wet, but they say it's just dried out before I can, I can get there. <coughs> right the way through here. And then a very, very thin coat of that right down to the horizon. Thin it right out. And you can see that's a graduated wash. It's, it's a, the colours coming all the way down. And because I've been dabbing it on and going stronger and stronger into it, uh, we've got this, the effects of cloud in the background. While that's still damp, um, I'm, I, for me, I'd like a little, little more of the rose in it, so I'm going to take a bit of the rose now. So that was ultramarine down to cerulean or the turquoise. Now a little bit of the rose, a very thin coat of the rose. And I'm going to just add a little rose down at the very bottom here, while it's still wet, just to give us warmth to the horizon. Don't make it too wet or it spreads everywhere. Watercolour is controlled accident. That <laughs> sounds a dichotomy, doesn't it? Controlled accident. But we want to use the accidents we get with the paint uh, as part of our... I'm going to start using some of that rose just gently, quite thinly, into the clouds underneath here before I make my grey. Right, the grey. Um, we were talking about this earlier. The grey now is going to be the ultramarine and a wee touch of burnt sienna, which, gave, which is giving me this lovely effect for the... And again, as it's dried out, I'm getting rather hard edges, I may want to come back. <coughs> and if those are hard edges, then just come back with some clean water again. You can use a smaller brush if you want. And just soften those in, because you only want a certain amount. The hard edges are really, like up there, look, that's a hard edge there. But that top cloud right-hand side is a hard edge. If I wanted darker still, I could still go back in with my blue and make it darker. Now remember, Paint your paintings a stronger colour than you expect to paint because watercolour dries almost 50% lighter than when you put it on. So you think you've done it quite strong, but actually when it dries out, it's so delicate. The only white you're leaving is, you know, the areas of the cloud which are the original. Masking fluid's already there. So if we didn't have masking fluid, 
we'd have to either use white gouache, which is the first choice, or white acrylic, second choice. No, I'm not. I'm going to start with my, with my lemon yellow, um, lemon. because I want to be even, even lighter. So lemon and yellow, or if you've got it, the aureolin, which is even better still. And I'm going to give it an entire wash of that, of the lemon yellow. For the water? Yep. And using the tip of the brush now to start already feeling the light colours, I'm going to paint the whole stern of the boat for the yellow ochre. And anything like the wooden beams in there. And I haven't just made it one block into the stern, I've used the brush sideways and left little bits of yellow look reflecting in there. You see the little bits of yellow reflecting yeah. through? Yeah. So it's not just one block. If you have done that, and you've already got too far, then dry your brush, go back with a small brush and lift out some light areas out from it. So you can always lift out with your brush while it's still wet. This and is the reflection. This is the reflect. We're in the water yeah. now. We're doing the reflections of the mast and the boat. Coming down here, wobbly line look coming down, yeah, all the way down the here, here into there. And it comes, little stroke, cross strokes coming through. Don't worry too much about being exact, as long as we've got an approximate. So we've got that sort of an effect there. Down for the mast. Down for the mast, down for the back of the boat. It comes down from the windmill too here. The windmill yeah. is actually reflecting that, or that yellow ochre down yeah, there as well. Let it dry a fraction, we're going to get too wet. You see it hasn't, or even with my painting being vertical, they haven't blended one into another totally. It's important to keep those strokes separate. Don't make them too strong, love. Very strong. You've got a bit strong. Look at, look at mine, you can see the difference. You yeah. know, keep looking at mine, check on the lightness. We're starting with our lights, we're going to our darker. That dark colour you've got there we will use later. So quite light at the moment, very pale. And I'll lighten it up with some water then. You can take a bit out with a fine brush, you can actually lift out with, it with, with, with a damp brush. Yeah. So yeah, lift out those little lines if you want, don't scrub, just lift out. Yeah. Tip of the brush, we're just being delicate with our paint. Now I'm going on to the cerulean or the turquoise. And I'm going to just, again, painting in lines across feeling these ripples coming right up to the boat and keep that keep those little strokes going for the water all the way down you can see the yellow is just glowing through in some places we lose the yellow altogether because we're going to have this very light blue going I'm going to on. take some of that rose or magenta we're going to start bringing that color in that's going to come slightly over the yellow ochre here and just drop in. This is going to give us our orangey colour to the back of the boat. We'll do a bit more orange later but that, that'll work. And again start bringing that just into the reflections of the boat here and right through. If you want it stronger then you add a bit more colour rather than having it watered down. If you want it a little bit stronger then a little bit more colour into it. Now I've got to let that dry a little bit because I've got areas now you see that are starting to blend totally into one area. So I'm going to just take a, take a small break. Ultramarine on the rose, which gives me a slight purple. And I'm going to just start now to work these purer colours. I'm going to go right over that boat again there. And here, and bring that colour down. I might have to go for a small brush and bring the ripples out from the boat. So I've got the boat painted and I'm now bringing the ripples out from it. The tip of the brush and letting it just spread a little bit. Then you add, make the paint mix a little bit thicker. You see down here in the foreground I'm making my marks quite strong paint. I'm going a bit stronger down here in the foreground. By now my paint is starting to dry which is good because that's what I want. So as it dries I can get harder and sharper edges to these ripples that are coming down. Now I'm going to go darker. I've worked from my lightest, the lemon yellow, through to my yellow ochre, through to the cerulean, through to the pinks, then the mixture of the ultramarine and the um, burnt sienna. Now there's a colour we haven't used yet, and that's the Prussian blue. 
This is going to be our darkest colour. At the very end here I'm now taking the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna, which is going to give me my real darks. I can't stop at the minute because if I do it's going to get too hard. I'm going to bring that in right Where's through here. Gone? And it's fairly thick. I'm making quite a thick mix now um, because I need to be able to get a nice dark colour. Make a mistake, wet it with your brush, lift it out with a damp brush or with a tissue. And finally we've got the greens reflecting. Now to make the greens, um, our, our coolest green is going to be the cerulean or the uh, turquoise and the lemon yellow. And our warmest green is going to be the ultramarine blue and the yellow ochre. Details we're going to do at the end. So at the moment we've just got effects of light, soft effects of light. The, the water. Yeah. Right. Is so this, lemon yellow the then, area fairly the thickly, mm -hmm. the whole of the trees, the grass, the bushes in the background, right through one coat, lemon yellow, like that. Right through one coat, lemon yellow. And make it, as I say, fairly heavy, this one. If you want to drop a little bit while it's on your brush back into the water, because you see a bit more, that's fine. Now, while we've got that mix, we can get wet into wet effects. So, for instance, for the um, tree in the background, if I want to take now some, I want a fairly warm green there, I'm going to take a bit of yellow ochre. I said about a warm green earlier. Yellow ochre and a bit of the ultramarine will give me a very warm green. I'm just going to drop that in with the tip of my brush, leaving the light colours showing through. So I'm building it up, just that tree only, around the bait, the um, little uh, hut there. Even stronger if I started using Prussian and brown with it, but this is warm enough what I want at the moment. I'm going to go dark in a minute. It's very different to yes, it is mine. It must be those cheap paints. Yeah, <laughs> if yours is stronger, fine. But Build it up, so I've just started wet into wet there, wet into wet, wet into wet. It's dark around the yacht up here. Um, and I'm going to go darker still. While that's still wet, I'm just going to drop into that look. I so want to be a bit warmer, so I need a bit more burnt sienna. And yellow ochre, was it? That was, uh, yeah. yeah that, um, that was yeah. ultramarine and yellow ochre. Now I'm going Prussian and yellow ochre. And a little touch of burnt sienna to get more. warm. Um, burnt sienna and the Prussian into that and the yellow ochre as well so I've got a mixture of three going and I want to get some of the reed effects back here I'm just going to drag that rake down through here to start getting the effects of the reeds here you can see that fluffy edge that I get just to give you an idea of what the rake will do and I'm dragging the dark into the light there we cannot paint light over dark in watercolour we've got to paint dark over light so I'm dragging the dark just down into that grass at the top quite dark against there. And just now we were saying how light that was, that yellow. I want a lovely light green there. I'm going to come back with that mix of yellow. So the original yellow and, but this time not yellow and ultramarine, yellow and turquoise, which will give me a very, very light acidy green. And let's just look at that with a glaze. And this is where we use one colour over another. So I'm using the lemon yellow, or yellow yellow would be better, with some of the turquoise to give me this lovely acid green here. I'm going to bring that right down to the front. Little bits of light left reflecting into the water, right down through here. Even a glaze of green over the boat for me. But right down, just little dabs of it into there to get this so if I want more yellow, I'll put more yellow. If I want more, more of the blue, I'll put more of the cerulean. The the, and again, if you see bits of that coming down below in the reflections that you haven't got enough of, now's the time you can just want the colours on your brush. So we have ultramarine blue, a little bit of rose, and a touch of the green for this. And the shadow down here, blend that side in, and a wee bit of Prussian blue just under that top edge as it drops down to give us the shadow coming down. 
So, mask and fluid to come off now. If it come off your fingers, fine. Make sure that it's perfectly dry. If it won't come off your fingers, use a cloth. In my case, a cloth is better. It drags it off better. If your paint isn't dry, you'll have a complete mess. So make sure that your watercolour is dry. And then we can remove all of these bits of light. Hopefully. Now this masking fluid is the Favio one and it's been on here for several weeks. So I like to prepare ahead. I've got three demos already prepared sitting at home ready to go. But first of all I want to get in any stronger colours like I've lost here with the boat, the mast, the larger colours up here. These larger areas of colour I need to get those in. Now that originally um, we mixed um, yellow ochre and burnt sienna. At the moment I'm going to use lemon, a little bit of yellow ochre, not but, uh, and the um, sorry the, the magenta to get that lovely orange <coughs> orange red. See if I can do it with that first. Same colour for the mast. Maybe a bit more yellow at first. Always start with your lighter colour and work with your darker colours. Right, so you can see my boat now just about done. I just need, I've got too many white marks here in mine, I need to soften those down. To soften, I don't have to put more paint on. I can just take clean water, if you want to watch this, I can just take clean water and just blend in some of the surrounding colours look, just gently. A little bit of white left there, too much white, I'm just blending the surrounding colour in a bit, in places, rather than painting over, and it softens it all down. A lovely effect of water there now. So all I've got to do now is paint my dark sink. So I'm going to go back to my Prussian and burnt sienna mix. And I can start painting in carefully my windmill sails. You can see it coming on there. This is the Prussian and burnt sienna mix. You can see I'm going each side, the other side now, the shadowed side of the, um, the sails. So, fine details for the darks. We can't put the lights back in unless we're going to use gouache or acrylic. If you've got the dark on your brush, if you see it anywhere else, now is the time to start putting it in. So at this stage, if you had sponges or you've got great brushes or you want to try any of mine, these final details, now is the time to be... Don't forget the dark side of the, um, the hut here too. It's darker one side than the other. What colours are we using for the canopy of the boatman? We gave it a wash of the lemon yellow at first yeah. and then I brought a little bit of the blue over it. Yeah. And now I'm just finishing off the dark colour I said, which is the Prussian and the brown, a little, a thin wash of that to make a very light grey just in the folds, yeah? That's, that's what I would call very loosely painted. Yeah. And I've seen many. But there's our original. Here's our small demonstration.